Hi there, my name is Alesha. Welcome to your gentle yoga class. In this class, I have a series of props that you may want to use. So here I have a couple of sturdy blocks and um, I have a yoga belt as well. I do have a foam here, um, but you can substitute any of these props and you may not necessarily need them or want them either. Um, you probably will need a belt though. So if you don't have one, you could use like a bathrobe tie or even sometimes like um, a long like hoodie kind of rolled up or something of that nature um, that's bendy and kind of long like a belt. And uh, you could use a little thin pillow instead of a foam and uh, maybe a couple really big books for blocks. And again, you might just keep it simple and not use a whole lot of that stuff. So this class is um, more of an accessible class. So I'll give you some options to take. Feel free to take what works for you and leave out the rest. Uh, we'll get started here in a moment, laying on your mat on your back. So when you're laying on your back, uh, some of us, it doesn't feel so comfortable to have our head and neck uh, kind of flat towards the ground. So if you have a little pillow handy, you could put that under your head. If you feel okay laying flat, that's fine too, no worries. You can make your way on down to the ground. If you feel like it's kind of awkward to come down, then lay on your side and then roll over. And then once you're here, you can adjust your head. And I'll invite you to come into constructive rest. So this version of constructive rest, we're going to bring our feet out wider wider than hips and knees drift in towards each other. Depending on your hip structure um, and how you're feeling here, your knees might actually touch or they might just kind of come close to touching. And your feet could go out wide. Knee, your toes point in a little bit. And your hands could rest, say, on your belly or even out to your sides if you prefer. Now you could keep your eyes softly open and look at a spot on the ceiling, or if you like, you could close your eyes for a few moments. And here we'll become aware of where we feel that sense of grounding and gravity beneath us. So you might start to notice the pressure of your feet on the ground. Maybe you notice even the texture of your mat or the floor. Notice where your feet are touching the ground. And you might even notice which parts of your feet aren't touching the ground. And if you're tending to hold some tension around the feet and ankles here, see if you can soften the feet down and know they're supported by the earth. Allow your legs to relax just as much as they can. Allow your back to soften your belly and the ground supporting your whole torso. And start to soften your shoulders. Your arms can relax. Maybe you can even soften your forehead or your eyes or even your jaw. sinking down towards the ground. And here you don't have to do a whole lot. Just be supported, be held here on the ground, on the earth. And 
Now you might stick with this feeling and bring your attention to that sense of grounding still. Or if you feel comfortable following your breath, then maybe you start to notice the breath go into the chest, into the belly. You might even feel the pressure of your breath go towards your back. And as you breathe out, your back softens, belly softens, ribs and chest. Everything lets go. Finding a few rounds like that, allowing the breath to expand through your rib cage as you inhale and soften through your ribs and back as you exhale. If your breath feels a little wobbly or choppy, then maybe you start to smooth out the breath. So elongate the breath in and elongate your breath out. So we're like stretching the breath. Follow three more full breaths like that. So inhale, fill up. Exhale, empty out. Slow, steady breath in. Slow, steady breath out. Last time, inhale. And exhale. All right, and then from here, you can start to connect to your body again. Maybe you wiggle your fingers or your toes. Start to walk your feet in about hips distance apart. Coming into a windshield wiper here, hands could be on your abdomen still, or again, or maybe your arms are still out to the side. Now here you might start with a little movement, rocking your knees just a few inches from side to side. But if you feel like you can start to free up the hips and lower back a little bit, then maybe your knees come a little bit closer towards the floor. Your bottom knee may touch the floor, but it might not, either way is okay. We're just going to where we feel good and we can breathe easily. If you start to coordinate your breath here with your movement, so one way could be a breath in and one way could be a breath out. If your breaths are super long, then maybe two movements per one breath. Now you could stay here moving your legs, or if you want, you could reach your hands towards the ceiling, hold opposite elbows so that your forearms are above your chest. And then with your forearms above your chest, send your elbows away from your knees. And then switch. So if someone were to see you from up above, you kind of look like this funky Z shape, swishing from side to side. Or if you're American, it's Z, of course. <laughs> now, your head could go along with your arms, if you like, starting to look a little from side to side. Take a couple more breaths, a couple more movements here. Go into your own pace. Your own breath. Awesome. And then come back to center. From here, you can hold your knees and towards your chest. Now, you could hold around your knees or behind the knees. Sometimes behind the knees puts a little less pressure in the knee joint itself. Or if it feels like your legs are far away, then use a belt or a bathrobe tie behind your knees to extend your reach. And then from here, we can draw circles with the knees on the ceiling. Getting a little more motion in the hips. Maybe you feel like you're massaging the low back a little bit. Take a few breaths here. 
And then start to go the other way. Whatever direction you haven't gone yet, draw circles with the knees. Rolling around. Breathing. And eventually come back to center. Land your feet down. If you had something under your head, um, I'll invite you to bring that out of the way, especially if your head can go to the ground. If your head feels like it's just kind of floating up and you really do need that support, uh, keep it under, but otherwise we'll keep the head flat. And then here your arms could be by your sides. Maybe your palms are up and your arms are about 45 degrees out or so. So there's some space between your hips and your arms. From here, you can start to tuck your hips under. So you're gonna breathe out, pull your belly button in and up. And then as that happens, you might feel like your lower back connects to the floor. If you don't really know what I'm saying, you could even bring your hand above your belly button or two hands and then try that. So breathing out, tucking the hips under like you're rounding the lower back a little bit. Now, if you know something like Pilates, then this is like the imprint kind of thing they do. Now, we can start to press the heels down into the floor. Your gaze is still up towards the ceiling and neck is relaxed. You might stay here just connecting your feet to the floor, feeling the backs of your legs light up, and then having a little connection with your belly here as you breathe. Or if you like, you could start to press your hips up towards the ceiling. So you're lifting your hips off the ground, feeling the strength in your legs. And now you don't have to go into a really high bridge, especially if you know bridge. We're just, we're just going to a place where we can feel the legs wake up a bit and we're in control of the hips. Take one more full breath in here. And then as you exhale, lower down slowly. So you're lowering almost like you could lower each vertebrae at a time. And you might feel that connection to the belly here, slowing down the movement. It's like your belly is the brakes. All right. And then once you're down, hips are down, take your breath. And let the breath go out. Let's try that again. So tucking your hips under. It might feel like you're rounding the lower back a little bit. Belly button pulls in and up on your breath out. Press your heels down. You might stay here with hips down or maybe you start to peel your hips up off the ground. Gaze is centered towards the ceiling. Your legs are strong. And then while you're here and lifted, you might feel like you want to find little robot arms. So you bend your elbows, fingertips go towards ceiling. You're grounding the backs of your shoulders down, upper arm bones down. And then also breathe, so take a breath. And then on your next breath out, lower down slowly each vertebrae at a time until finally your hips land down your neck's relaxed, your legs are relaxed, your belly and back. And take a breath here. Let the breath go out. And we'll try that one more time. So keep your head towards center, connect your feet to the ground. On your next breath out, pull your belly button in and up towards your rib cage. Your hands can be by your sides, heels pressed down. Maybe you lift your hips up. Now, if you want, you could go a little higher this time. So maybe your mid back starts to lift up off the ground. If you feel like there's a lot of pressure in your head here, come back down a little bit lower, or you might try even pressing your elbows into the floor with your elbows bent, fingertips to sky. So little robot arms here. We'll stay for a couple more breaths, so keep the connection to your legs, connection to your breath, but your face is soft, jaw is relaxed. Last breath. 
and eventually can lower down slowly, starting to lower your mid back, your lower back, and finally your hips back down if they were lifted. And take a breath here. Let any extra tension go. Now, if you like, you can start to bring your knees in towards your chest again. Now, this time you might just sway a little from side to side. Eventually, you can land your feet back down, roll on over to your side, and come up towards tabletop or hands and knees. Depending on how you feel here, you might actually take a little pillow under your knees or fold over your mat if you have one under your knees. And you might have your palms down under shoulders or even fists down if your wrists are feeling a little bit grumpy today. Now wherever you are, connect to your foundation, get steady, and let's make our way into cow. So tilt your hips up. Lower your belly down, reach your chest forward, take a breath here. And then as you exhale, tuck your hips under, round your spine. We'll find cat. We'll alternate that a few times. So lift your tailbone up, sway your belly down, reach your chest forward, take a breath in. Exhale, tuck your hips, round your spine, let your head be heavy. One more each way, breath in, lengthen. And breath out to round. Soften your head, soften your neck. Eventually come back to center. From here we'll come into cat looking at its tail or a version of it. So with this version we're gonna shorten the right side waist. So it's like you're bringing your right shoulder towards your right hip. And then while you're here, you might even look back at your right hip and take a breath. Eventually come back to center and we'll switch to the opposite side. So shorten the left side of your waist, lengthen through the opposite side. And if you want, you can look back at your left hip, take a breath and let the breath go out. We'll do that a couple times so you can Sway on over, shorten the right side of the waist, look back, and then return to center. And then switch to your left and back. And then maybe you start to find your own pace, your own breath. Maybe you want to go a little faster than me or a little slower. So tuning into your body, tuning into your breath. Follow one more each direction. And then come on back. From here, we'll come into puppy. So you can land your forearms down. This version of puppy, you can keep your hips high and your forehead could land on the floor or even a prop. So you might have a block under your head or you might even have uh, your hand stacked up under your head. Go to a place where you can stay for three breaths. So we're allowing the breath to move in, filling up through the waist. And move out, softening through your back, through your waist. Follow your last breath here. And let it go out. Now you have the option to stay right here in the center. But if you want to add a side bend, you can walk your hands, your torso, your head, either over towards the edge of your mat or even off your mat if that feels okay. And again, if you have a prop, you could bring that on over under your forehead or you might let your head rest down on one of your arms. So we're stretching out through the left side waist a little bit more. Connect to a couple breaths here. And 
Last breath in. Let your breath empty out. Come back to center. If you're up to the side, switch towards the left side. So wander on over there. Maybe you have something under your head. Maybe you have your arm under your head. Maybe your head's on the ground. Wherever you are, go to where you feel ease of breath. Follow two more breaths here. One more long breath in. And let it go out. Guide your way back to center if you're out to the side. Press up into hands and knees. Once again, your fist could be down as well, so that's another option. Now from here, we'll see if we can add the cow and cat together with cat looking at its tail. And I'll walk you through that. So you can start by lowering your belly down towards the floor, maybe lengthen your chin a little forward. And then shorten the left side of your waist so you're elongating through the right. And then round up into cat. So it's like we're imagining the rib cage is like a barrel and we're barrel rolling the rib cage around. Then bringing your ribs over towards the left, shortening through your opposite side waist. And then eventually allow your belly to come back to center into that uh, cow shape. We'll do that a few times. Make sure you're breathing. So we're going on over to the right, rounding the spine, ribs go left, and then lower towards the floor. And you might start to feel different sensations happening in the hips, in your shoulders, maybe even in your neck. Notice what's happening here as you move and breathe. One more round. And then come back to center. From here, we'll try the other direction. So we're going to start in cow, tilting your hips up, sinking your belly down, and then switching. So you're reaching your rib cage over to the left side, shortening through the opposite side waist, rounding up now towards the ceiling, coming back towards center. Ribs go to your right, and then belly lowers down to the ground. So we're just swaying around in circles. Barrel rolling the opposite direction. And if you're like, this is weird, it is kind of weird. <laughs> Just move and breathe a couple more times. Okay, one more time like that. Great, and then come on down to your puppy again. So forearms could land. Head might land on the floor or prop. Let the wrists relax and take your breath. Now eventually you can start to press up the tabletop again. If you have something under your knees, you can move it up to the side, especially if it's like a, a fairly big pillow. We're gonna find half plank, so you can walk your knees back a little behind you, lower your hips in line with back, and then bend your elbows, come on down to the ground. And it might not be pretty, and that's okay. <laughs> We're not here to be pretty. We're here to connect to ourselves in this moment. Now, while you're here, you can come into crocodile. So crocodile, you're gonna bring your hands stacked up under your forehead. So this is a version of it. Elbows go out to the sides. And the shoelace part of your foot's touching the ground, the fronts of your thighs are touching the ground, and you might even feel your belly and your hips press down. Now, if you're here and your feet are narrow and that's putting a little bit of pressure around your lower back, you could actually bring your feet a little bit wider so your legs would look like a relaxed V shape. And then sometimes I can feel a little more open around the hips and low back. If your lower belly and hips are far off the ground, then what you're gonna do is the same as what we did in bridge, is you're gonna to start to tuck your hips under, 
Breathe out, pull your belly button in and up and connect the front of your hips and pelvis towards the floor. So you might just have a light connection towards the belly, but you can still breathe. Become aware of the breath here. So as you notice the breath in, you might feel there's a little resistance between your rib cage and your belly and the floor. And then as you notice the breath out, you might notice you're sinking towards the ground, the belly relaxes, and the back relaxes. Now I'm gonna keep my head up here just so I can talk a little bit better and not have my face smooshed down towards the ground. Um, but you can continue to keep your hands stacked and your forehead on your hands. So your neck is relaxed. And we'll start to allow the pressure of the breath now as you breathe in to move towards your lower back. So as you breathe in, you might feel your chest, fill up your belly, and then with the pressure of the breath can move down towards your lower back and your hips. As you breathe out, allow your hips to soften, your lower back to soften, ribs and chest soften as well. And we'll try that a couple times. And if you don't really get it, that's okay. Just try your best. So breathing in, filling up the whole torso. And breathing out, softening your whole torso. Try that one more time. And let it go. Now, sometimes this can feel really good on your lower back, so maybe you stay here the whole time. If you want to try to come into a back bend, you could bring your hands under your shoulders, your chin or your forehead rest down towards the ground. Start to press the shoelace part of your foot down, the fronts of your hips press down, but your kneecaps lift up. From the strength of your legs, inhale, lift your head, your chest, your shoulders up off the ground. And if you're here and you're noticing that your chin really pokes forward, you're craning your head and neck forward, and that might feel a little crunchy on the back of your neck. So if that's happening, tuck your chin towards your throat. And rather than reaching your, chest, your chin forward, the top of your head goes forward. And then while you're doing all this stuff, <laughs> see if you can take a breath. Eventually, you can soften your head down, your chest down, your shoulders down, relax your legs. You have the option to turn your head to one side or keep your head in the center. Maybe even gently sway your hips from side to side for a breath or two. Now keep in mind you can continue to stay in crocodile if you're there or come back to it. But if you want to try another round of Hello Cobra or Baby Cobra, start to wake up your legs again. Tops of the feet press down, so toenails press down. Kneecaps lift up. And use the strength of your legs to rise. So inhale, lift your shoulders, lift your chest, lift your head away from the floor. And then maybe, maybe you hover your hands up this time. So you're like, look, no hands. Okay, so I'm going to connect to the legs, reach the top of the head forward, toes also reaching back and pressing down, take another breath, and then eventually come on down. Maybe you turn your head to the other direction, or if it feels better to keep your head centered, by all means, keep it in the middle, and take a breath here. You can do a little sway of the hips if you like and let some tension go. Option to stay here or take another round of low or baby cobra. So wake up your legs, bring your head to center. Inhale, lift, head, shoulders, chest, hands, baby. Now if you feel like super adventurous, you wanna lift up your feet here too, you could do that. 
If it feels a little bit crunchy on your low back, then land your feet back down. Use the strength through your legs to keep yourself lifted. Now you could stay here, or maybe for your last breath in here, you're gonna reach your chest away from the ground a little bit more, so all your muscles are working to help you up. You might feel that down your back. And then exhale, land down. This time, hands stack up under your forehead. Bend your knees, feet to ceiling, and swish your feet from side to side. So it's like a reverse windshield wiper or like a mer person's tail. Take a couple breaths here. Neck is relaxed. Breathing with your movement. One more each way. Okay, and then feet land down. Here's the hard part. We're gonna get back up again. <laughs> okay, so bring your hands under your shoulders. Now you could even try to maneuver yourself with your forearms. Um, I find that a little bit awkward, but if it works for you, then go ahead. Hands under shoulders, press the floor away, or however you need to get there is fine. I'm not gonna judge you. Just get up off the floor, it's all good. Here, you might bring something under your knees again. So if you have your little pillow, you may bring that in. If you need a little bit of space here under your hands to get your legs forward, then bring some blocks or a little bit of height under your hands. You could even use a chair if you have one handy. We'll come into a low lunge. So step your right foot forward. If you can't get it forward, hold on to your right ankle with your right hand and bring it on up there. From here, we'll find a bit of movement. So we're gonna wake up through the hips and lower back a little bit more. Whenever you're ready, shift your hips a little bit forward. Maybe you take a breath here. And then as you breathe out, shift your hips back. So just keep in mind how you're feeling. If you have anything going on with your body, take it easy. So it doesn't have to be impressive. It doesn't have to look good. It just has to feel good. So we're taking the, the easeful, soft, and gentle approach today, which doesn't always come natural for all of us, especially someone like me. So if you're like, man, this is slow, this is kind of hard, I don't like it, I'm there with you. Take a couple more breaths. Moving and breathing, it's that simple. Okay. And then find your little lunge again. Your hands could be on the floor or hands on blocks. If you don't have a block, maybe your left fist is down. We're coming into a low lunge twist, so you could bring your right hand to right thigh. And you can start to turn your belly towards your bent leg side, the one that's in front. If you want a little support here, keep your hand on thigh, or if you want, you could even reach your right arm up. Keep steady in both legs. As you breathe and open the chest. You could look outward, you could look upward towards your top hand. Might not be like the best view ever, but you could. And then take a couple breaths right here, keeping the legs steady. Last full breath in. And as you exhale, unwind. Hands plant down on floor or blocks. This time step your right leg back, finding a version of table. This time, left leg goes forward. Again, you can pick it up and get it forward if it doesn't want to go there. And if you have blocks, keep in mind there's lots of levels of blocks. So you could bring them high, you could bring them low, you can bring them in the middle. And once you feel set up where you feel good, we'll start to shift the hips a bit forward. Take a breath. If you're like me, your knees start popping and all kinds of weird sounds happen. <laughs> as long as it doesn't hurt, it's okay. So sometimes our bodies make weird sounds. 
move and breathe. Often I want to take a breath in when I move forward and the breath out when I go back and straight, straighten the front knee. And it doesn't have to be fully straight either or fully bent either. We're just waking up through the hips, through the legs, through the back. Take a couple more here, breathe. Last one. And then return back to your low lunge. You have the option to stay here if you're already working on balance, but if you want, you could come into that twist on the second side. So right hand presses on floor or block or fist could be down as well. Left hand to left thigh. Get steady in your foundation. Option to stay here, or if you want, you could reach up. And we'll settle in here where you feel like there's a little challenge, but you can still breathe. There might be some stretch happening. If you wanna look up to your top hand or thumb, you could add that in. If your neck doesn't like it, you could look out to the side. Couple more full, steady breaths here. Last breath in. And let your breath go out. Unwind. This time, come back to your tabletop. And we'll find a seat. So you can kind of move all this stuff out of the way. Take a seat. Legs go in front of you. and your hands go behind. Now I'll turn to face you, but you can face um, forward on your mat if you like. And we'll start to swish the knees from side to side, so we're finding a seated windshield wiper. Knees go side to side. Now you might start out with a small movement and then go into a bigger movement. Do what works for you. And then if you're feeling comfortable here, you might start to bring your feet a little wider and then your knees can drift through this leg shape. Make sure you're still breathing. And then the next time you're going over to your right side, Land both knees down to your right. And you might have your right foot in line with your opposite knee. If this doesn't feel super great, you could even have your knee on top of your right foot. Or if you kind of get like a leg cramp, sometimes you could just bring your left leg along. And we'll try a little bit of hip rocking here. So your right hand goes behind. It could be on a block if you have shorter arms. I'm kind of blessed with long arms. <laughs> and then that will shift the hips on over to the right side. Take a breath. As you breathe out, shift your hips back. Inhale, sway on over. Exhale, sway back. One more time. So we're feeling the stretch through the front of the left hip here and the left glutes are working. Exhale back. If you want to add a little more motion, start with the hips and then move through the rib cage. Move your gaze on over to the right and then go all the way back in reverse. Okay, again, inhale, sway on over. Exhale back. Still moving from the hip, last one like that. And exhale back. Now, if you like, you could reach your left arm out this time and then swoop it around. So still moving from the hip and allowing the motion to go up through your arm. Sweep your arm back down. Inhale across, maybe up, maybe you look up. Exhale back down. One more time like that. Reach and lower. Now, if you're feeling good, stick with this. If you wanna to try to add on, you can sweep your left arm across and then maybe you press into your back hand and lift your hips up for a wheel of life. If this feels bananas, then don't worry about it. Keep your hips down. And we'll land the hips down, sway the arm across. 
Try that a couple more times, either hips up or down. Maybe you press into your back hand, lift your hips up. Exhale, everything lands and goes back to the starting point. One more time, inhale. And exhale. All right, and you can bring your left foot around, your right foot around. This time, knees go left. So get set up to where you feel good. All the same options still apply. You can have a block under your left hand. You can have your uh, right knee on top of foot. Right hand goes to right hip. We'll start with the hip rocking. So rock your hips over to your left. Take a breath. And then back. And you'll sway over and shift back. So just kind of feel it out. See what it feels like to move around the hips in this direction. If this feels good, stick there. Or if you want to add a little more motion throughout your rib cage, you might find a little twist. Maybe you look out to the left and exhale, return back. Inhale, sway over. And exhale, sway back. One more time. Exhale, return. Now, if you want, you can start to reach your right arm out and then sweep your arm across, maybe even up. You could look up if you like. Exhale, back down. Inhale, reach. And exhale, down. One more time. Sway, reach. Exhale, sweep the arm down. Now, you could stick with this, or maybe this time you press into your back hand, lift your hips up. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. And then exhale, hips could land if they're up, arm sweeps across to the starting point. Again, reach, take a breath, hips might lift, exhale, lower. Last time, inhale, sweep your arm, exhale, lower on down. We'll make our way back on over to tabletop. So shimmy on over however you need to get there. And we'll think about coming up to ragdoll. So if you're someone where it feels kind of weird to get your feet forward towards your hands, you could bring your hands on blocks. You can start with one leg forward, the other leg forward. It could even be a few steps forward. Your feet are about two fists distance apart here or so. And your knees might be a little bit soft and bent. We're bending mostly from the hips, but then your spine could follow. Your hands might stay on blocks. Your forearms might go to your thighs for a bit of support for your back. Or if you feel okay, dangling forward, allowing your head, your torso, your arms to dangle forward, then perhaps you go there. Now, if you're feeling like your neck and your shoulders are just really kind of hanging on, then maybe you start to sway your head gently from side to side. Or you might even kind of sway your torso a little from side to side, or your hips, and then your torso follows. Stay for your next couple of breaths. Now get steady in your feet. You can bend your knees a little bit more if you need to. You can walk your hands up your legs. Come up halfway, lengthen from your tailbone to the very top of your head, take a breath. And as you breathe out, maintain this posture. This time use the strength of your legs to come up, bend your knees a little bit if you need to, press into your feet, rise on up. If you want, you could reach up for extended mountain. If it feels okay in your head and neck, you could even look up. Stay for an extra breath here. And then as you breathe out, hands go down by your sides for mountain. So we'll come into a few rounds of sun breaths. You can start with your hands by your sides in mountain. And as you inhale, you can either reach your arms out to the sides and up or 
forward and up, depending on how your shoulders feel here. Eventually your hands could touch overhead or wherever they feel good, it might not be overhead. And then as you exhale, float your hands down by your sides. So we'll do that a few rounds. Keep in mind, you can take breaks. You can go to a range of motion that feels good on your shoulders. So we're allowing the breath to carry the movement. Inhaling to lift, extend, expand, and exhale to soften and lower. You might feel like you want to go faster or slower than me, so just tune into your breath, tune into your body. If this is feeling pretty good, you want to stick with the arms and stay with just the arm. It's all good. Or if you want, you can add on with the legs. So the next time your hands go down, bend at the hips. Send your hips back and down as you bend your knees. And then press into your feet, straighten your legs, arms reach up. Exhale, hips sink back. Now you could go to your own range of motion, so maybe you don't bend your hips as much. But the hips are going back and down, and the knees kind of follow along as they bend. So the knees aren't really going super forward over the toes. We're using this to help work the backs of the legs. You might even feel it in your quads and the front of your, your legs at certain points in time. If you get too hot or you get a little dizzy, stick with the arms or take a break. We'll try three more. Last one, reach up, take a breath. Exhale, hands float down, knees bend. And then when you're ready, stand in mountain. Find a breath or two here. From here, we'll come into crescent moon side stretch so you can reach your right palm up towards the ceiling. Reach your arm up and over. If your shoulder's not happy today <laughs> or it feels stuck, you could bring your hand to shoulder instead. Now you could use your bottom hand on your bottom thigh for support. So you're just kind of grounding in there. Feet are still pressing and hips might bump a little bit to your right. You could look straight out or you could look up. Follow three breaths wherever you are. Last breath in, long breath out. Press down into your feet, come on up. Arm lowers, hips go back to center, switch sides. So left palm faces up, hand can go to shoulder or up and over, hips go a little to your left. You could have some support here with your bottom hand. Choose your gaze. We'll be here for three breaths. Let the breath expand through your left side waist. And then soften through the waist as you breathe out. Last breath here. And out it goes. Feet press down, torso rises, arm lowers, hips go back to center. Now here you're going to grab onto your belt or your bathroom tie. Oh, or maybe not. So we're um, coming into tie dance. If you're using an actual belt, make sure you're holding onto the metal piece so you don't like whack yourself in the head. It's just really kind of a practical thing. Um, and then we'll bring the belt or the bathrobe tie or whatever you have out in front of your hips here. If for some reason you don't have one or it feels weird, 
don't worry about it so much. You don't necessarily have to use it. So we'll just go straight up with the arms as you breathe in, reaching the belt up. And as you breathe out, lower your arms down. Go to your own range of motion. So if you feel better a little bit lower than me, then stay lower. If you wanna go all the way up, then do so. So we're just moving with our breath again. It's kind of a theme. <laughs> Inhale, lift, and exhale, lower. Feel out the shoulders. Notice what they feel like on the inside as you go up and as you go down. Maybe you stick with this the whole time, and that's awesome, that's great. If you want to try to move on here, you could reach your arms up, widen your grip a little bit, and then maybe you start to send your arms back a little. Feel it out. Sometimes it feels kind of scary to go back. But if your shoulders are feeling okay, then maybe you start to go down a little bit more. Okay. Now, if you're down here, you're like, how am I gonna get up? <laughs> you can do it, take a breath. If you ever need to drop the belt and just come out that way, that's okay. Otherwise, reach up overhead and then arms lower down. So we're going super slow for a couple of rounds here. If you widened your grip, you can bring your hands about shoulder distance again. Inhale, reach up. Slide your arms out. Go to where you feel like there's a good stretch happening. So it could be that you stay up overhead. It could be that you go back or maybe down. Listen to your shoulders. They will tell you what is right. We don't have to go back and down all in the same day. It can take a few days, a few months maybe. <laughs> and eventually you can lower your arms down. Let's do that a few more rounds, maybe a little faster if it's feeling okay. Inhale, arms rise, widen your grip. Exhale, arms go back. Any amount's okay or no amount is also fine. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. One more time, let's try it. Breath in. Again, you could stay here. Widen if you want to. Exhale. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, lower your arms down. And if you're like new to this whole breathing thing, just breathe. You don't have to make it so complicated. It'll come. You can bring the belt off to the side for a moment. We'll try a little bit of balancing. So um, if you have a thick mat or like a carpet, you could go to a harder surface or step off the mat. You could even bring a hand to a wall. We'll try tree. So start on your right foot, bend your opposite knee out to the side. So you're moving from your hip. Now you could have a kickstand with your left toes on the ground, heel above opposite ankle, and hands could be low. They could even be medium at heart center or up. Typically up feels a little more challenging for me, so check in to see where you need to be. You could maintain the contact of your feet on the ground, or you could bring your foot a little higher onto your calf, below the knee, or if you feel like super adventurous and ready, your foot could be on your upper thigh, but really don't worry about it if it's not happening today. Okay, and we'll set our drishti or our gaze. So the gaze is soft, but focused on something that doesn't move. Could you stay for three breaths? Follow your last breath in. Let your breath go out. Knee goes forward, foot lands down. Arms could lower if they're up. Now you could shake out the feet a little bit or maybe you sort of pedal out your feet and hips. Let it go. If you're using a wall, you could bring your uh, other leg that you're gonna be standing on close to the wall. Hand could be on there. And we'll bring the opposite knee out. So right knee out, moving from the hip, 
mostly. Choose your stance. So arms could be low, medium, or high. Toes could be down on the ground. Maybe they go foot on calf or thigh. Set your gaze. Follow three breaths. Last breath here. Let it go. Knee goes forward, foot lands down. So if you ever feel like time is moving too fast, you're speeding through life, stand on one foot, it'll slow everything down. It feels like forever. <laughs> so that's, that's a hot tip from yoga. All right, so we'll come into our warrior two. So you're gonna face the long, um, edge of your mat here and then bring your right toes up pivot on your right heel and face your right toes forward towards the short edge of your mat your back foot done a bit um, like parallel to the back edge of the mat or it could be on a slight angle if that feels better in your hip so try that out now the chest is kind of out to the side even though the hips might feel a little askew and then you can bring your hands to hips to start and just start to bend your front knee. Now your knee might go over your ankle and then bring it towards straight again. And then maybe you breathe in as you bend and breathe out as you straighten. Just keep breathing. And then check in and see where your knee is going. So your knee might be kind of dipping in or out. See if you can track your knee along with a foot. Now, if for some reason your hips feel kind of blocked and your knee kind of wants to dip in, then straighten the leg, uh, pivot the foot a little bit so that your ankle and your knee are going together. So they're in the same direction. So we're just tracking the knee over the center of the foot. So it's like you're going knee over ankle and back. And if you can't quite get that, you could imagine you're pressing your outer um, right thigh into an imaginary wall. Or you might even bring your hand on the outer thigh and press into your hand. Then we'll find a place where you'd like to stay. Now your stance could be quite wide as long as one leg is distance apart, or it could be a little more narrow if you're looking for more stability. And then we can reach the arms out wide like a capital T. Maybe you even look over your right fingertips. See if we can stay here for three breaths. So legs are planted, strong, chest is opening. Last breath here. And breath goes out. Lower your hands down. Straighten your front leg. Lift your toes. Pivot on over to the side. This time we'll try over to the left side. Or if you messed up right and left, like sometimes happens, just do the other side. So you're gonna lift your left toes, pivot on your heel face towards the short edge of your mat. Sit up your feet where you feel strong and stable. And we can bring the hands to hips here just to start. Begin to bend your left knee. Maybe you take a breath in here. And then as you breathe out, you can straighten. So we'll just coordinate the movement and breath together. Just the best you can. You don't have to be perfect. Just continue on and then check out your knee here. See how your hips feeling. See if you can track your knee towards the center of your foot. So you can see your front big toe when you bend your knee. That's kind of a good gauge that your knee is going towards the center. So we're allowing the knee to line up with the ankle so there's no torque in the knee. That's what we're going after. If you feel like your knee is dipping in and your hip feels blocked, you could actually angle your front uh, foot 
and knee in a little. Otherwise, if you have the space, you can press into an imaginary wall with your outer left hip. We're gonna press into your hand here. And then you might start to feel that you have muscles there and they can work. <laughs> so check that out. Take a couple more, breathe. And eventually we'll settle in here. Bend your front knee. Set up the legs where you feel stable. You feel like you can maintain the stance. And then maybe your arms go out wide. Maybe you look over your left fingertips. And we'll stay here for three steady breaths. Allow the breath to move in slowly. And then breath to elongate, slow breath out. Okay. Feet are planted. Breath is long. Last breath in. Last breath out. Hands lower down. Front leg straightens. Lift your toes. Pivot on your heel. And then you're gonna be facing all 10 toes forward. From here we'll come into temple so you can Clasp your hands, send your index fingers up towards the ceiling. You might have your thumbs pointing back behind you. And then see if you can lengthen from your outer ankles all the way up to the sides of your waist, up to your hands. So you're getting tall and reaching on up. If you ever need a break, your hands could also go to heart center. It's okay. Connect your feet. See if one side's pressing in more than the other. See if you can even out the weight in the feet. If you want, you can stay exactly as you are, or you might bend over towards your left side. Lengthen through your opposite side waist up into the shoulder. Take a couple breaths. Last breath in, steady breath out, feet press down, rise up if you're tilted over to the side. If you want, you can change the grip of the hands. So it's like you're moving the hands uh, one finger over, so your other pinky's in front. And maybe you lean on over towards the right side. Feel the strength of your legs. Maybe you feel a bit of stretch in the legs too. Inner thighs might be stretching. Feel some length through your waist. And then could you breathe here for two more breaths? Connect to your feet now. Come on up. Lower your hands down. Now, it might feel like your legs are like, been there forever, you don't know how to get them back in. <laughs> you might heel toe your feet in, or you might take a few steps in. And if you like, you can just bend one knee and then the other, shake the hips out from side to side. Let any tension go from the lower back that you can. So, you might come into the first variation of your ragdoll, so whether that's hands on blocks, forearms on thighs or what have you, um, feel free to take that variation. But if you want to come into yoga mudra arms, I'll give you a couple options there. So you might hold on to opposite elbows or forearms behind the back. You might bring a belt or a bathrobe tie behind you. And then if you're here, see if you could reach your shoulders up, back and down. Soften the shoulders. Maybe you straighten the elbows and the palms face in towards each other. So even if you need to bring your hands out quite wide, it's okay. But we're rotating the shoulders so the palms face in a little. If you can, if that's like, that's weird or it feels painful or awkward, then don't worry about it. We're gonna start to bend from the hips. So send your hips back behind you. 
Maybe you have a little bend of the knees and fold forward. Now, for some reason, any of these variations are not working. You could find airplane arms out to the side, so it might look like you're ready to go down a ski jump instead. Depending on where you are, you might feel like you could reach your knuckles behind you as you're bending forward, or maybe you start to feel a little bit of a lift of your knuckles, and they might even feel like they're going up to the ceiling. If that's not really in your wheelhouse today, it's okay. Now, while you're here, connect to your feet once again. Keep the legs strong and steady, but see if you can soften a little bit around your face, around your jaw, around your neck. Take a few breaths. Maybe you gently sway your head from side to side. Now, if you have a bind, start to let it go. Maybe you let go of the belt if you had it and then bring it on off to the side. Now, we'll come on down to hands and knees again. So, if you need something under your knees, bring it on handy. Hands go onto blocks, perhaps, or the floor. Go back to your tabletop. If you need a moment, take a moment. So I'll give you a couple options here. Now, if you feel like you wanna stay in quadruped with your hands and knees on the ground, you might find cow and cat for several rounds. Or you might even find puppy if you need a little break for your wrists. Otherwise, if you feel ready, you can come on up to kneeling so on your knees, depending on how your knees feel, you might prefer to have your toes tucked under or pointed back. And then just remember in the beginning how we did that little sort of tuck of the tailbone and then a pulling in of the belly button in and up. See if you could do that here. So if you have a little um, space between your thighs and your belly, we're gonna try to flatten that out a little bit. So it might feel like you're bringing your hips a little bit forward. So your pelvis is a little more neutral. It's not kind of tucked under and it's not pointed back. So we're not like a daisy duck or we're not like pink panther where we're kind of tucked under and rounding. We're finding just in the center. And then when you find the center, you might feel a stretch on the front of your thighs if you're not already. From here, you can bring your hands to your tops of your hip crests. You might bring your palms even in towards your low back with your fingers pointing down. Or if that feels all kind of ways awkward <laughs> on your wrists, then maybe you bring your fists into your low back instead. And then wherever you are, start to guide your elbows back behind you. And it's like you're leaning your hips a little bit forward now. So you're leaning a little bit forward, maybe like half an inch or so. We're coming into camel, so this is your version of camel for today. Maybe you start to puff your chest forward and up towards your chin. So now we're pretty back bendy. Go to where you feel good around the lower back area. So it might just be a gentle lift of the chest. Go to a place where the breath feels fairly easy and you feel in control. If you're having trouble connecting with your legs, you might even imagine you could squeeze an imaginary block between your thighs. Your chest could stay up towards your chin or maybe for the last couple of breaths, you look up. It could be a slight gaze up or you might even look up towards the ceiling. Go to where your lower back feels happy and your legs are in control. And breathe. Find your last breath here. Let the breath go out. Connect to your legs. 
Knees press down, legs squeeze in towards each other, bring your chest back up, your shoulders back up, head comes up last. Okay, and we're gonna come down towards the floor if you're not there already, so hands and knees, or maybe hands on blocks, and just sway your hips gently from side to side. Now, if you want to look back towards your hip like you did in the beginning for a version of cat looking at its tail, then maybe you do that for a couple of rounds. Eventually, make your way back to center. From here, you can come on down towards your back. So if you want to bring your little pillow handy or your foam or what have you for under your head, bring that on in. You can make your way on over to your side and then roll onto your back. All right, so after those back bends, it might feel a little tender around the low back, so just take it easy. You have the option here to rock your knees from side to side, just kind of shake out the hips, shake out the back again, or if you like, you could bring your knees in towards your chest. You have the option here to stay in stillness or movement. Find three or four breaths. Eventually, if your legs are up, land your feet down. This time we'll come into recline butterfly. So you might have your blocks handy by your hips. From here, your soles of feet go together and knees go wide. Sometimes this feels quite intense. So if you're looking for support, you could bring your blocks or pillows or what have you under your outer thighs. Or sometimes it feels nice to put your props on an angle and have your outer calves supported as well as your outer thighs, but avoid pressure in the bony parts of the knees. Now here your gaze could soften or close. If you feel good without any props, then just take them away. Let gravity help you with the stretch here. If for some reason it feels pinchy or shaky or a really intense sensation, then come out a bit. Let your hands rest to where they feel good. Follow five more steady breaths. Connect your next breath here. And let your breath go out. Since you've been here a while, you might even use the help of your hands to your outer thighs. Press your legs back up. Soles of feet land down. Take a breath. And let the breath go out. From here, you can come into reclined figure four. So your right ankle could go over your opposite knee. If you're here and you're feeling an awesome stretch, stay as you are. If you don't feel a whole lot of sensation yet, you could choose to hold behind your left knee or use a belt to extend your reach. So your right arm goes through the leg space here and, and clasps behind your knee. If this feels like too much, just land your foot down again on the left side, it's okay. 
Now, if you have your leg shape up, you might even choose to start to kick your left foot towards the ceiling. So then you're adding a hamstring stretch in at the same time. And then wherever you are, notice your next three breaths. So connecting to the body, connecting to the breath and the present moment. So the breath and the body always live right here where the mind likes to time travel. Follow your last breath in. Let your breath go out. If you're straightening your left knee, rebend it. If your leg shape is up, land your left foot down. We'll all land the right foot down. Take a moment, take a breath. This time we'll go on over to the second side. So left ankle goes over opposite knee. Check in with this side. Sometimes the sides are different. So maybe you stay here this time. You might choose to hold behind your right knee with your hands or the reach of a belt. If you have your leg shape up, of course you could stay here or you might prefer to try to reach your right foot towards the ceiling. Notice your next three breaths. Now, if you're here, you don't feel a whole lot of stretch yet. You could even wake up all 10 toes, pull them towards your kneecaps. Take your last breath here. Gently let your breath go out. Rebend your right knee if your leg was straightened. Land your right foot down if it's up. Both feet land down on the ground. This time your arms could go out wide like a capital T. Or if you don't have a lot of space, you could find like a cactus arms with elbows bent. This time your knees can drift on over towards your right side. Now, if this feels a little funny on your lower back, you could lift your hips up, shift them a little to the left, and then knees drift over towards your right. Your legs might go towards the floor or on the floor. And if you want to ease into the stretch, you could actually have a block or a support under your outer right leg. Your gaze could be centered or maybe you start to turn your head away from your leg shape. Go to a place where you could stay for five full steady breaths. Just opening a bit of space on your left side waist and allowing gravity to help you with the stretch. Stay with your last breath. Let your breath empty out. Guide your head back to center, your knees back up. If you've shifted your hips to the left, this time lift your hips up a bit. So you're pressing into your heels, shift your hips slightly right, and then knees go over to your left side. Option to have those blocks there if you like. Choose where your neck feels good. So you might stay here in the middle or you might look out to your right side. Remaining here for five breaths.
Notice your next breath, go in. Notice your next breath, go all the way out. Eventually bring your head back to center, your legs back to center. Now if you like to end the same way you started, you could bring your feet wide, knees go inward, and toes might point slightly inward in constructive rest. If you feel okay laying flat on your back, you could do that. If you feel better on your side or on your belly, then maybe you lay on over there. If you just want to kind of keep it simple and lay flat, maybe your legs go out long, arms could go by your sides or on your belly. Now, wherever you are, you might choose to keep your gaze soft. Or maybe you close your eyes completely. If you need to move around a little bit or you want to put some socks on to keep your feet warm. Or if you even have a blanket handy, you could put that on. So sometimes the body will cool down pretty quickly if we become still. If your lights are bright, either cover your eyes or turn the lights down. Or if you have someone handy, if you're lucky, then maybe they will turn the lights off there for you. If you need a few more moments, just pause the video and then get yourself set up to where you feel warm, you feel very comfortable, the lights are a bit dim, and your breath feels easy. Just like in the beginning, you can start to allow your body to be held by the ground. Begin to soften your feet. Allow your feet to soften down towards the ground. Become aware of your ankles, calves, knees and thighs. And allow your legs to be completely held, completely relaxed, completely heavy. And here you may be able to soften your hips, your entire back your abdomen, your chest. Allow your whole torso to relax and let go. Consciously allow your shoulders to drop down towards the ground. Your arms, your elbows, forearms, wrists, and hands are soft. Upper limbs are soft and heavy. Start to relax the back of your neck. Relax the throat. Feel a sensation of relaxation moving up through the back of your head to the top of the head to your forehead and eventually wash over your entire face. The sensation of relaxation washing down your entire body. Whole body is relaxed. Here, I'll give you a few moments of quiet so you can integrate your practice and your day so far. And I'll call you out when the time is up.
begin to notice your mind, notice where your attention was placed. Gently guide your attention back to your body, back to your breath. Gradually wake up your physical body so you might start to wiggle your fingers, your toes. And then you might add bigger joints like Chris, ankles, arms and legs. Eventually, if your legs are out long, you can bend your knees again. Make your way on over to your side if you haven't already. Supporting your head. And then press up towards a comfortable seat. Give yourself some time here if you need it. From here, if you like, you can bring your hands to the center of your chest or your belly. And take a full breath in. Let your breath empty out. Thank you for being here with me. And I hope you have a good rest of your day or evening or whatever time it is. I'll see you again soon.